In this video, I'm going to show you how to take an image and convert that into an animated icon in Adobe After Effects. So let's get into it. So as you can see, we're inside of Adobe After Effects and I've got this picture of a phone and we're going to use this as our reference to create an overlay and then we'll animate that overlay on in After Effects. So first of all, you can see I've got this phone image and to start off, I'm just going to go up to the rectangle tool. We'll go to the rounded rectangle tool and I'm just going to draw a mask around this. However, I don't want to have the image selected because I want to create a shape layer rather than a mask. So in order to do that, just select off the image and then we'll come up here and just create that outline around the phone. Now from here, you want to go up into the fill and stroke options up here. So press the word fill and then make sure no fill is selected. Then we'll go across to stroke, make sure solid color is selected. We'll press OK on that. And of course, if you select the color box, you can change the color of this icon as well. And then you can increase or decrease the stroke width. So if we just turn off the original layer, you can see this is what we have so far. So as you can see, we've got this outline around the phone. Now we can go in and animate all of the apps. So let's just go down to this bottom bar and I'm just going to create a mask around here. And you can see there's much more of a curved edge around here. So rather than going into the rounded rectangle tool, I'm going to go into the pen tool and I'm just going to draw another mask around this. But when I get to the corner, I'm going to go to the end of the corner and then I'll keep my finger held down and then drag that around to create a corner. Then we'll go down to the next corner and we'll do the same thing. So create that corner, go down to the other corner, go down to this other corner. And again, same thing. Then we'll just complete this mask like this. There we go. And at the moment you can see that is way too thick. So we're just going to pull the stroke width down a little. And now if we zoom out, you can see we've created that. It's definitely not perfect at this moment in time. So you can always go back in and make any adjustments, but I'm just going to leave that like that for now. Then we can go in and we can animate these apps. Although because there's so many different apps, I'm just going to create one, animate that one, and then use that as a template for everything else. So I'm just going to go into the rounded rectangle tool. And I'm just going to draw a mask around this one. And then I'm going to use that one as the template for the other three that I've got on the home screen. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and animate this larger widget outline. So shape layer three. And in order to do that, I'm going to go into contents, go to add, press the arrow next to add and go down to trim paths. Then I'll go into trim paths and I'll pull the end down to zero, create a brand new keyframe by selecting the stopwatch icon move over one second and pull that up to 100. And if I solo that layer, you'll see that now animates on really nicely. At the moment though, that animation just looks a little bit boring. So we're going to convert these normal linear keyframes into ease in keyframes or easy ease keyframes. And to do that, we're just going to highlight both of them, right click on one keyframe assistant and select easy ease. And now when we play this back, that's much nicer. So of course, if we unsolo that, we can copy and paste this widget, but to make life a little bit easier for ourselves, I'm just going to rename this widget. There we go. So now I'm just going to copy and paste that two times. So I'm going to select the widget layer and we'll go command C, command V on the keyboard. That's on Mac. If you're Windows, I believe it's control C, control V. Then I'll press P to load position and I'm just going to drag the position up. Then I'll copy widget two. So command C, command V, press P again, and then we'll drag the position of this layer up as well. So now you can see we've got these three widgets in place. Now we can move on to these app icons. So I'm just going to zoom all the way into one of those apps. Make sure nothing is selected. We'll go back into the rounded rectangle tool and I'm just going to draw a mask around this app. Now you can make this a thinner stroke. You can make this a thicker stroke. It's completely up to you, but I'm going to leave that at around 10. And then same thing again, we're going to go into add trim paths, go into trim paths, pull the start up to 100. We'll go the opposite way on this one to make it varied. Brand new keyframe on start, move over one second and pull that down to 0%. And again, we'll convert those keyframes to easy ease keyframes. So that now animates in like this. 
and we can go ahead and we can rename this one to app. So from there, now we can just go ahead and move all of these apps into place. So we'll make a copy of this app, Command C, Command V, position, move over. Then we'll do the same thing again, Command C, Command V, press P, move over. And you just want to keep rinsing and repeating this process over and over again for all of the apps that you have. There we go. So let's zoom back out to fit and let's turn off the original reference layer and see what we've got so far. So that looks really cool. Although at the moment though, the outline of the phone isn't animating and this app drawer at the bottom isn't animating on either. So let's focus on the outline of the phone. So that is shape layer one and we'll rename this phone. And again, we'll go into add trim paths, go into trim paths. We'll pull the end down to zero brand new keyframe on end, move over a second and pull this up to 100%. And now that animates in with everything else. And we'll just do the same thing to the app draw. We'll rename this to app draw. We'll go into that layer, add trim paths, go into trim paths. We'll pull the start up to 100, create a brand new keyframe on the start, move over and pull this down to 0%. And again, by the way, you can convert these keyframes into your Easy Ease keyframes to make that nice animation. But this is what we have so far. It's looking really cool. Let's turn on the original layer, though, and let's see what we've got missing. So you can see there's some dots down here that we can animate in. So they could be cool. So we'll add three dots pulsing in. Then you can see we've got the time and we've got some icons up here, which we can focus on. So let's go for these dots first. However, all of these layers are starting to look a little messy. So let's just highlight everything, select a drop down arrow and then select it again and that will collapse everything. Now we'll go ahead and create a new circle. So we'll go into the rounded rectangle tool, but go down to the ellipse tool and then just draw an ellipse around that dot. There we go, that looks good. Then we can just animate this on. So we'll press T on the keyboard with that layer selected to load opacity and we'll pull this down to 0%. Brand new keyframe on zero. Move over and pull that up to 100%. And when we play this back, that fades on. And we'll do the same thing for the two other dots. So we'll just copy and paste that one. Press P on the keyboard, move that into position. Then copy and paste that layer. Press P and move that one over as well. So you've got three dots loading in at the same time. But if you wanted to offset these so that they come in one after another, then you just move the keyframes on each layer over a little bit like this. So now they're coming in at separate times. Let's turn off that bottom layer and see what this looks like as a whole. There you go. That looks really good. Of course, we are just missing these icons at the top. So you can go in and add those in as well if you wanted to. Let's just turn on, let's see what we've got. So we've got the time and then we've got these bars here and then a battery icon. Of course, as well, if you wanted to add this notch in from the phone, then you are more than welcome to. So you can just zoom into this layer and we'll go up to the pen tool. Make sure nothing is selected. And I'm just going to draw a line across the top. Then I'll come down to here, round out this corner, move across and then come back up to here, making sure that corner is rounded. And you just want to go ahead and press fill, select solid color. Okay. And we'll turn this to white. And now when we click off this layer, you can see we've now got our notch. However, though, it is currently not going to animate in. So we'll just nest this in its own composition or pre-compose this. So we'll right click and select pre-compose. And the reason why I'm doing this is because you can't actually draw a mask around a shape layer. You've got to put it in its own pre-composition. So we'll call this notch. Then you can just go ahead and go up to the rectangle tool, draw a mask around that notch, scroll through to the point where this should be animated in. So around here, go into the mask, create a brand new keyframe on mask path by selecting that stopwatch icon, 
we'll move back in time and I'll just move this mask up so that it disappears. Then again, you can convert these keyframes into your easy ease keyframes. Let's see how this looks. There you go. That looks really cool. So again, you can just go in and you can add some notification icons. You can add app names in there. You can just animate everything in exactly how you would like it to animate in. But now we've just got this static phone. Now we can actually take this one step further and animate the position or the rotation of this. And that combined with the trim path animation will create a really nice dynamic animation. Before we carry on with the video though, I first just want to talk about a preset pack from Sonduk Film. This process can be a little bit lengthy and if you've got loads of icons to create, unfortunately you can spend a long time designing and animating these icons. However, if we go into one of the Sonduk packs, so this is MGAP, if we go in to icons, you can see we've got all of these preset animations created for us. So let's go into media and we'll zoom in on this. And as you can see, you've got some really nice dynamic animations. So rather than going through the process of creating an animation from scratch, you can just select one of these icons and get that imported into your After Effects composition. If you're interested in the icon animations in this pack and everything else this pack has to offer, then check out the link in the description below. Now back to the video. So at this stage, you can see we've got this phone animating in and it looks really nice. But the problem is it's not really doing anything else. So let's go ahead and create a null object and parent everything to a null object. So in order to do that, we'll go layer new null object. Then we'll select everything. So the keyboard shortcut for that on Mac is command and A. That could be control and A on Windows. Then we'll deselect null one. And then in this box over here, you've got parent and link. You want to select the box that says none and you want to select null one. So now all of those layers on the phone are now linked to that null one. So let's go into null one, go into transform. And you can see because everything is now linked to that null object, if we were to pull the scale down, the entire phone animation is now being affected. So this means we can actually animate the rotation. So as this is animating in, we can have it rotating in and having a nice bounce effect. However, I want the animation to be affected from the bottom of the phone rather than the middle. If I was to change the rotation now, it just rotates around the center. But if I move the anchor point down, which is this marker here, if I move this down to the bottom of the phone, and then I pull the position back down so this phone is now in the center again, you can see if I adjust the rotation now, it animates from the bottom of the phone. The anchor point is basically just the point where the animation is going to be activated from. So if the anchor point was on the bottom of this trackpad, for example, it would rotate around here. But if it was in the middle, it would rotate around the middle. So let's just go ahead and do that. So we'll go to the very beginning and we'll pull our rotation around. So we're at plus 17 or plus 20. Then we'll create a brand new keyframe on the rotation. We'll move over half a second and we'll go to negative 15. So we've got this nice animation across. Then we'll move across a little bit more and we'll go to a plus number. So around plus 13. Then we'll go a few frames over. We'll go to a negative number. So negative seven. A few frames over again. And then we'll go into plus five. A few frames over again. Negative three. A few frames over and we'll go one. And then we'll just finish this up by going to zero. So let's see how this looks. That does look good, but I feel it just looks a little bit stiff. So let's just go ahead and convert these keyframes into easy ease keyframes and see how that affects it. But there you go. That is how you create an icon animation inside of Adobe After Effects using an image as a reference. So thank you for watching this video. I really do appreciate your support and hopefully I will see you on the next video. See you there.